Okay, today we want to talk about tools, tools, human beings using tools, and we're going to talk about right action, creating tools, using tools, right action, and then we're going to contrast that with jobs, employment. But we start with tools. From the beginning of time, human beings have been finding ways to use external objects to improve their well-being. Early tools were rocks, you shave off the rocks, you can carve, you can cut, you can put it on a spear. So how do we use our tools? Is it for profiteering? In our society, advanced technology and advanced science is funded by profiteering money. Money that comes out of profiteering. You know, goofy amounts of money that are in very few hands. But the investment in technology is toward enhancing profiteering. So we can continue to be consumed by that. Or we have this easy, easy, easy way. We have to flip things 180 degrees in order to see it. And that's a tough flip. Because if you're accustomed to this narrative and your role in that narrative versus a whole different narrative that only can grow and be birthed in local communities. It has to be local communities physically coming together in groups and talking about what matters most. And then working together to figure out how what matters most can be served, protected, enhanced, or expanded. And if we work together doing that, that's the thing. See, that's another 180 degree. We think is that we have to work alone. Or we're, we're, we're independent. We're separate. Largely, that's what we believe on this planet, that we're separate things. Most of us don't realize, I'm just waking up to this, that we are not just an individual human being. We are. But we're also a humanity. For what I'm learning, it's through our interrelationships that we fully express our humanity. And it has to happen in the local community. Really, really simple. People come together in a group, but definitely in circles, not in squares, and not with stages and square arrangements of chairs. You know what I'm saying? A circle and a fire in the middle, or a circle inside with candle, even. The shift that is beautiful, because it's 180 degrees, all you have to do is flip it. I mean, it's a really beautiful little model. Whatever the narrative of the culture, the narrative of the norms, Whatever it's saying, flip it. Take the one that is the most normal, you know, the most accepted. Flip it 180 degrees and then look at, wonder, imagine, what would be the opposite of that? And you just do that throughout all these belief constructs. And then you decide, you know, a lot of them you're going to flip. I'm inviting you to think this way. <laughs> just try it on. And if it doesn't fit, don't wear it. But give it a shot at 180 degree flip. Get together with a group of people and... You go around the wheel. As a local community, we go around the wheel. We say, okay, food. How are we doing food in this town? How's it going? People healthy? Does everybody have enough? Okay, I'm going to switch subjects here. So I think in terms of the healthcare industry, which isn't complete yet, right? You get the medical industry. That's part, that's part of that, I guess, right? The healthcare industry. You got the insurance companies. <laughs> And the banks are always behind it all. They're just quiet. You know, the insurance company becomes the access from the banks. What else? What are the other participants? Wow, this is, this is part of my methodology. I'm, I'm modeling it. Take one area and we floodlight it. We just look at, put it on a logical map of who are the participants, what are the participants, because it could be corporations that aren't people or industries. Somewhere in there, you got the consumer, which, which I like to think in terms of a gift receiver, receiver of a gift. And you have the marketer, which I would like to translate to new language, to the creator and, and offer of the gift. And those are the two organic <laughs> parts of this machine. And then you just follow the money. You map all you map the money flow. So what you don't want to see is this. Is this this sucking. This sucking into it's a funnel. <laughs> it's an unbalanced trade relation. And so what we do is we go around the wheel. Healthcare, food, beverage, energy. Let's look at energy as a little community and what we can do. Wow, there's a lot we can do. 
and then we can look at school huge lot we can do there which will really stimulate the community if the schools are unleashing new explorers into this question of how can I help how can we make things better how can I create something that will benefit the community that energy is very different and it's much more powerful than the energy of I gotta create a business and I'm gonna price my stuff and I'm gonna spend this much money on marketing and, and I'm gonna try to market and I'm gonna investigate social media and I'm gonna figure out all the tricks to get people to follow and, and you know, it's this little game. It's this economic monetization game. The bottom line there is Google, Facebook. Somebody needs to floodlight it. I've, I've looked at pieces, but if you look at the internet and its monetization of the internet, it's, it's not good. And we can have this, we can increase the volume and quality of the offers that come to us. We can increase that. That's a good thing. So I want offers to come. What's an offer? Is it an ad or is it an offer of a gift? Am, am I trying to stimulate your consumption, subconscious programming mind, execute as instructed in a consumption which has an unbalanced, untrustworthy, inorganic, it's transacting with the beast that is coercing, bamboozling you, us, into a consumption habit based on fear. They mask it all kinds of ways, but down at the bottom is this fear. And that's a very specific frequency of thought, even though we might call it stress. And I have a whole industry around how do we deal with stress. Stress is fucking fear. So are we meant to be fearful, we human beings? No, we're meant to be joyful. We're meant to be playing at giving. It's fun. There's only one step. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's radical. I call it radical simple. But So this jobs thing, I just want to capture this. So what you have is this age-old practice of the human beings, human race, is to, is to develop tools. And, and eventually we call it, and it's technology. So we're using things that are organized in such a way that, that simplify a process. A production process, a, a way of producing something. Automation, which comes from investments in technology, mathematics, and science in general, right? So the money that's flowing into science and technology in this bizarro world that we live in, that we can stop, or we, we don't stop anything, we just create from the ground up, from the local community up, and all of the local communities and, and a sharing open source of all of the discoveries of how to do things really well and, and how with even more ease, grace and fun can we contribute <laughs> to this community. So you get the fun of interacting with people and contributing and I think that's the missing link is how can we build real intimate trusting relationships so that you can work together on a sustained basis without killing each other eventually. <laughs> sabotaging each other or yourself ourselves and the, the vision of the thing because of we're not we don't have a solid foundation so the first thing is get a solid foundation that's our first responsibility we have to stand up in our hearts to do that nobody's gonna hand that to us we have to go get that and it's got to become a practice what's a solid foundation well you know, approach approaching absolute confidence tapping into infinite intelligence once you're you have access to infinite intelligence, then you do have absolute confidence. It's so wild. So for, for from the beginning of time, as we as human beings kind of envision the history, mankind, humankind, right, men and women have been discovering and developing tools to span their well-being and joy, to bring abundance, as much abundance into their life as possible so that we can play together, contributing to the community, living in the how can I help, but it's all about local community, but we're, we're national, regional, global, hemispherical communities, and they're not defined by any governmental you know, boundary, really. We're human beings on a planet. They're like a human skin. There's a grass skin, there's an insect skin, there's a plant kingdom skin, there's a human skin. So, but this tools thing is important. So we've always developed tools. The question is, do we develop tools for our well-being or do we develop tools to serve a profiteering master? 
who's manipulating the whole economy so that wealth from a monetization perspective of money is accumulated and the connections made between wealth and power or money power. So how do we define wealth? I think that's one of those sacred questions. How do we define wealth? But I can say very confidently, because I've looked at this, you know, and you do your own research, but what I've found is that fundamentally the big investment into technology and into science and even mathematics is made by corporations and, and global banks for the sole purpose of ex expanding the profiteering. It's a synthetic community. There are a bunch of synthetic entities, enterprises, big corporations, global banks. So the investment in the technology is with the synthetics and, and it is invested to be utilized to extend, expand, the profiteering. So we've lost track. I think a, one of the great questions, I don't know the answer, is when, we, when did we lose track? At some point we did. And, and now have acquiesced to a world where the technology is used to hurt us. Here's the blind spot that I see, a huge blind spot. And I've got a graphic below that tries to describe it. We have a runaway train of less and less jobs, directly proportional to the advancement of technology and science, which is expanding at an exponential rate. This idea of jobs, that there's going to be a place for human beings in the marketplace. Driverless cars, just think about it. If that happened across the boards, how much employment is driven <laughs> from that industry? And you look across the boards, all the industries. So it's this, it's this investment into technology and tools, which we used to do for our well-being, and now the technology it turbocharges the funnel. So instead of having technology free human beings to explore in their lifelong adventure together, it actually works in some weird opposite way in terms of more and more people have less and less and they may have to work two jobs or they work extra hours. So this technology is advancing and their well-being is, is uh, going downhill. The tools are designed to help us in our well-being or they're designed to turbocharge the funnel and serve the profiteers. So we as human beings have to stand up in our hearts and we look, look around together and band together to say, no, nah, that doesn't make any sense anymore. We can create this right in our local community. And not only will, will we flourish and thrive and have more than enough to sustain us mostly as much as possible produced right here in our local, what we call our local community. But we will have the experience of collaborating together in a, in a, in a very, very powerful way. Each one of us making the commitment to each other one of us that, that we're going to be whole. It isn't so you can be happy only, because it is certainly that. It's because you have that responsibility to others, because if you're not in that knowing, if you, don't, if you don't grasp your wholeness as fully as you can, <laughs> then you are doing a disservice to the community, to humanity. You're basically a drag, not a draw. You're a pulling down versus a lifting. It's a very simple thing. Simple, simple, radical, simple thing. It's one decision. So it's those two things today. I think they're related in some weird way. Maybe you see a relationship, you can tell me.